Hail Comic Skate and Hail Matt Wenger. Today I'm reviewing Chapter 1 of Super Harem. I know it's long overdue. This was sent out December 23rd last year, 2019. And I'm finally getting around to reviewing it. So we're going to go through my notes and uh, see how awesome this work really is. Just, just Chapter 1 so far. I'm impressed. Can't hold it. <laughs> so Super Harem is written by Matt Wenger. Uh, line art by Joe Ball, inked as well, I think, and colors by Farah Nermaliza. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure it's not as eloquent as it should be. Anyway, we get chapter one. It's called The Tough One, all right? And so we get to meet this uh, character, Journey, and uh, she'll meet our main character, Tim. All right, so Tim is imbued with this power to... Give women, or give sexual partners, I assume, but as far as we know, women, uh, superhero powers when he consummates a relationship with them, when he has sex. That premise has really triggered a lot of people in CG. They think it's going to be some porno book or something, which I'm like, hey, that sounds awesome, but uh, Matt has said otherwise, and uh, I'm here to tell you it's not that. Um, aside from that very kind of explicit sounding premise uh he presents in a very uh, i won't say tame but tasteful way uh he definitely leads you on shows you like sexual attraction or whatever but he never takes it too far um so i would say it's a pg-13 you know just to be safe you know um viewer discretion advise what have you with your if you're, if you're gonna let your young audience potentially read this book i think it's fine for my children but each their own. Uh, had a hydrate. So, uh, Tim is able to give these powers to women, and we learn uh, in the past he did. There was a superhero in this city. Uh, I think it's Apollo Beach. Uh, she was the Valkyrie, and also his girlfriend and stuff. And then this mage, this professor, whatever, informs them, like, you're the cause of the evils that come into this world, these monsters, these Cthulhu-style tentacle freakazoid monsters that come and attack the city is because of these powers you're giving. So there's a consequence to someone having these powers. It's like a portal, uh, some sort of magic or, or what have you around um, his existence. But there's a hint that he is a key that unlocks this portal that, you know, could be mended to right this ship. Um, so I feel that's an Easter egg for the future of this um, story, some sort of, not MacGuffin, but, you know, it's the, the, the main goal to fix. Um, and with the powers, the sexuality, I think Wenger is really, uh, for what I foresee, because we're only getting one girl so far in a previous relationship that seems to be monogamous before, um, I anticipate the name superhero um wenger really walking the line of male fantasy and by that i mean uh, it's in the title harem uh there'll be multiple women they're on the cover by carlo Rowe, uh which is awesome by the way so uh but you know men i think you see it a lot in comics and uh anime there's like you know the girl to get you know we don't like to say it we like to you know, fantasize about multiple ladies, but men want ultimately that one solid catch that's just worth every other one you could uh, acquire. So I think he's going to walk that line, like I said, of male fantasy where there will be multiple women that this character is consummating with, I assume. Um, but it will seems to be at least meaningful with each. Uh, that's what I'm anticipating. So cool stuff here, Wenger. I like that. Um, also with the powers and the consequence... I feel there's sort of a reference to like a primordial kind of, um, I don't even know how to put it, you know, like having a child, you look at the world and you're like, God, I would not want to have a kid here, but then you fall in love with someone and maybe have a kid on accident and it makes it worthwhile, but you're scared shitless of all the risks now involved with that kid existing. You have to protect it from the insanity of the world. So I feel there's something intrinsic to the human nature uh, to the human existence that is uh, being spoken here by Wenger's art. I, I can't quite articulate, but you know, I gave you that example as an attempt. Um, I mentioned fixing the key. Uh, 
with three women characters on the cover and stuff, I assume there will be at least three chapters, and I feel the setup is going to be like uh, Powerpuff Girls, which I really love that show, so that will be cool. I might have to rewatch that just to try to um, divine what might be happening. Um, but I expect there to be like a sweet girl like Bubbles. Uh, I feel Journey is probably Buttercup. If not, then she's uh, Blossom, and I'm wondering how tough uh, the Buttercup comparison will be, but uh, that's what I'm foreseeing with this. But if not three chapters... Uh, I assume four at minimum, meeting each girl, and of course the plot advancing with each girl met, and then the conclusion for at least this initial story for this universe. Um, I'm really excited to see more stuff in this universe, Wenger. Um, but uh, getting into the actual art and the book and stuff, uh, I don't think this will be for everyone, but I think it has a real dy- dynamicism. Uh, for lack of a better word, I'm, I'm making something up, I think, you know, uh, screw me. But, uh, there is a, for one, I feel, yeah, the colors can just color over everything, but there's so much, um, ink work done by Joe Ball. I feel like properly coloring this by, uh, the colorist was probably a nightmare in a good way. Like, uh, uh, Joe Ball's style really speaks to me. It has a, uh, Super quality, but a gringiness, you know, I, I, uh, a griminess. I feel it's like uh, gritty, but graceful. And uh, the colors, I think the colors really send this book home the way it needs to be. There is, uh, I felt at first maybe comparing it to the pastel style, like um, Magic Cop. But really, uh, I, I don't think it's fair. I think it's like Superman, uh, uh, All-Star Superman. There's just like this kind of aura to the color, especially when there's light. There's a glow that is captured by this colorist that um, really just stands out. You know, you, one of the first shots you see is uh, the sunset at the beach, and it's just everything's glowing. The lights are glowing. And uh, yeah, a lot of props to that colorist. Um, it, it flows really well, the story does. So uh, I'm excited to see what else. Um, Winger has in store. I know he's got another project in the works coming up. So look forward to that. Um, it's It really is a page turner. It flows really well. Uh, and in conclusion, what would I like to see? Well, first off, of course, I would like to see the whole book. I can't wait. I'm glad I backed this at least digitally. Um, and I encourage everyone to back it at the highest tier available. Get as much as you can from this creative team. Um, it's a real testament to what CG can do. Because who knew who the hell Matt Wanger was before CG? I don't think anybody. I like this first chapter so much. I have so much confidence now in Wanger that I would uh, like Ryan Johnson over at Star Wars getting a trilogy before the film even came out. Uh, I would greenlight a second book from uh, Wanger if I was you know, his overlord, his seer, what have you. Um, another thing I'm anticipating... Uh, or something I like to see uh, going forward is varying size monsters like Shadow of the Colossus, where you're used to these giant, multi-story tall uh, creatures, and they you know get more complex. Um, but eventually, you get small stuff, flying stuff, stuff that swims. Um, I like to see some of that you know range, and I think we will get that because um, what you see in this first chapter. But if you've played Shadow of the Colossus, you know there's like a couple like t- like cow-sized creatures. Um, that, you know, add a whole new dynamic. And I think it'd be cool to have, you know, that rampaging through the city, challenging the heroes, just like the giant colossi in this book. Um, and lastly, and some of you will call me yesterday to be right off the bat for saying this, but uh, I think it'd be interesting story-wise, given what Wenger has already accomplished in this first chapter. Um, I don't think it'll happen, because I think he's already established a character uh, likes women, but I personally would like to see, uh, for storytelling dynamics, uh, a gay counterpart or something. Whether it's Tim or not, um, maybe he has a Hangover 2 experience, you know, and he gets too drunk and doesn't realize, oh, God, I slept with a man. Because there is a, uh, how would you say it? Men and women are, are, are quite different emotionally and stuff, you know, especially with uh, sexuality and with, you know, favors perhaps being attached to it. Men are very direct. We'll be like, hey, bro, uh, I'll give you this for that. 
you know, to to some shape or form versus women, uh, it's a lot more emotional and you got to tease it out and whatnot. So I, I anticipate something like that. You're already getting a bit with that, um, with the uh, kind of the seduction, the sustainment of power with Journey and Tim. Um, what would that be like with a man? You know, maybe a man that's more domineering uh, than Tim, which Tim seems kind of a, a weak character already. Um Maybe he'll grow. We'll see. But that's just something, uh, you know, some sort of detail I think, you know, would be pertinent as, you know, a kind of counter to this storytelling is uh, having a, a not just different partner, but different sex for the different dynamic. Um, but that's where I'm at. Let me know what you thought.